Kevin Feige recently marveled that just like Thanos, the pandemic has caused a real life blip for Marvel Studios. A single year, but timing is everything. And unfortunately, Kevin Feige had already built in a significant break between phase three and phase four. So that break has become really long, <laughs> which has left Marvel fans starving for content. And you're about to get fed thanks to Disney Plus. That's right, pandemic can't stop, no Disney Plus. And while Feige swears Black Widow won't do a simultaneous release in theaters and on Disney Plus like Raya the Last Dragon or Warner Brothers' entire 2021 slate on HBO Max, well, Disney also swore Soul was going to stick to theaters until it didn't. So, one way or another, you're on track to get 10 Marvel projects in 2021. And because some of them are TV shows, that will be hours upon hours upon hours of content. Oh my God. Which will test just how much a, uh, a franchise fandom can consume in a single year and how much that will impact other franchises. Feige's gonna drink everyone's milkshake. That's what he's gonna do. <laughs> That's fantastic. On yesterday's live stream, BTT member Brandon Hamill said, hey, Grace, why don't you rank this year's MCU content in terms of anticipation? Wouldn't that be fun? It would be fun, Brandon. And that's exactly what I'm going to do right now. And I can't wait to see your own rankings down below. Get ready to make some difficult decisions because Feige has quite the menu lined up. All right, so number 10. What, something has to be last. And I put, I think everybody will put this last probably. Although maybe you'll have some surprises, but I think what if is number 10. And that's hitting Disney Plus sometime this summer. Taken from the comics, what if is Marvel's version of DC's Elseworlds. I love those types of stories. What ifs were shorter though. They were usually like just one issue, whereas Elseworlds would typically be a mini series. So they were a little deeper. But, so I've, I've liked DC Elseworlds a little bit better, but I'm excited for this animated series. It seems like it'll be a fun romp for sure, as well as a real tearjerker, because Chadwick Boseman recorded his voice work for this show before he tragically passed away. The animation looks breathtaking, and uh, I, th I would say ambitious. I use ambitious a lot here, but I think phase four is nothing but, if, if not ambitious. Um, but I think the animation looks great. And the twists, interesting. This is last on my list though, because not only does something have to be, but it's a side adventure. It's not gonna do any MCU world building. And that I think is very important. And you'll see that reflected in my list. So that's number 10. Number nine, The Eternals. Maybe hitting theaters November 5th. This is so low on this list for three reasons. Number one, we know so little about it although they keep leaking a lot of toys. Number two, uh, and I can't believe some of the toys that have come out recently seem to talk about um, uh, you know, the villains of the piece, and I'm just very curious to see how this is actually gonna look. Uh, the, Lego piece, the Lego sets aren't, I don't think, giving us a good idea. So we know very little about it. Two, what we do know is, is confusing as heck. And boy, the comics are hard read. They just started a new Eternals title. I bought it, it's on my iPad. I have not watched, I have not read it yet. But you no, know, maybe third time's the charm with that comic. But the first two, I did not care for. And then this is Feige's most, for lack of a better word, woke project in an era of fandom where woke is hunted online. Just look at what happened to Wonder Woman 1984. That was brutal. Well, that was, that was really, you know, very, very, very brutal. Now, I am a huge supporter of representation. I strongly believe that movies should represent who is watching them. And I think that movies also can do a lot of good. They can bridge a lot of gaps and introduce people to a lot of new things. Sometimes those shouldn't be new things, but hey, what are you gonna do? However, I think it's imperative that representation be organic. That's how it succeeds. And Eternals can't be tokenism. It can't seem like Kevin Feige's just checking boxes and he just relegated it all to one movie. Uh, I do, though, after seeing Nomadland, even though I did not care for Nomadland, I do think Chloe Zhao is a talented filmmaker, and so I think that'll go a long way here. But, and I also have to add that Kevin Feige's big swings so far have all connected, and Eternals could end up being one of his biggest wins. Uh, it sure derailed DC's New Gods movie already, so I'm sure Kevin Feige feels for that alone it is valuable to him. All right, uh, or maybe New Gods will just learn from Eternals' mistakes? We'll see, although Tom King 
talk about a problematic, uh, I think the creative team, as I've said before, the creative team on DC's New Gods is better for a streaming show on HBO Max than it is for a movie. All right, so anyway, number eight, Ms. Marvel hitting Disney Plus towards the end of this year. Ms. Marvel is a fantastic comic, but its journey to live action has been rocky right out of the gate. With surprisingly tone-deaf casting decisions, not the lead, although she does have a very different look at the character in the comic. And already, you know, Ms. Marvel has already had controversy which has trended online. Still, Ms. Marvel brings Pakistani representation not just to the MCU, but in a much bigger sense to mainstream blockbusters in general. So a win here would be fantastic and it would be important. And it's also nice to see the Captain Marvel corner of the MCU start to get fleshed out. You know, everybody's got their own little space and I'm excited to see Captain Marvel's. It includes Secret Invasion. So it's an awesome space. Now, Kamala Khan is not only a super fan of Carol Danvers, but now, now we know that she is going to be showing up along with Monica Rambeau in Captain Marvel 2. And I'm very, very excited for that. Number seven, Hawkeye. Also hitting Disney Plus at the end of this year, and also based on a fantastic comic. Matt Fraction's Hawkeye leapt off the page. In fact, as I've been talking to you about, every single Hawkeye comic since, for the most part, has been absolutely fantastic. Check out Matt Rosenberg's as well. So I'm not surprised that this, these amazing comic book stories have leapt over to the MCU. Because when you read them, you're like, we gotta do this. Jeremy Renner might have some tabloid drama, but Haley Steinfeld is going to do the heavy lifting here. She has a Stan army poised and ready to go to rally for her in a role where she is perfectly cast. And the onset photos look absolutely perfect. Jeremy Renner, Haley Steinfeld, bow and arrows, which people for some reason really love. I don't get the appeal, but I'm excited. And also this adorable dog. I mean, that's amazing stuff. The only reason I put this show lower down on my list is that it looks like it's a bit smaller in scale compared to the other upcoming M MCU projects. Number six, The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, hitting Disney Plus March 19th. We have a date. Now, I'm, I'm, it's getting really tough to rank these. So I'm excited for the political intrigue that seems promised here, especially since that was so well done in Winter Soldier, the movie. And I'm rooting for Anthony Mackie to finally make Falcon a popular lead character, something the comics have never been able to do. They've never even, even been able to make Falcon a popular supporting character in the comics. So I really hope that this goes well. The first trailer was light on sweet, sweet Bucky action, which we all love, but hopefully there's more in the actual show. The show is also, I think they have a tough time. I mean, they're both in the title, but Cap gave the shield to Sam. So he has to have a little bit of the, uh, the you know, the edge. He's, he's I think, the, the, the true lead with Bucky right behind him. So, but that's tough because I think Bucky is the more cinematic, a little bit more popular character. So I hope the show can uh, validate that, that I, you know, the show needs to validate Captain America's choice to give the shield to Sam. So I'm really looking forward to that. There should also be a lot of stuff. You know, I think we've barely scratched the surface of what's going to be in this show. It's going to be like all Tom Clancy-esque, and I can't wait for that. The show is also rumored to be part of the journey of the Thunderbolts to join the MCU. Thunderbolts Assemble, who will be the MCU's suicide squad, basically. Uh, Yelena Belova, I've told you I heard shows up here, also on Hawkeye, so maybe that's a little bigger than it looks. And I think Thunderbolts are going to be very welcome by the fandom. Being able to add something to the overall MCU is a very important feather in any MCU show or movie's cap. So number five, Black Widow may be hitting theaters May 7th. I don't think it's going to move. Feige can say whatever he wants, but I believe this will probably be a simultaneous release of it if theaters aren't looking good by May. Now, speaking of the Thunderbolts, rumor is that they, start their, they will start their journey here with the end credit scene. I'm also looking forward to General Ross stepping up. Uh, I think William Hurt is fabulously cast. I've liked him so far, what he's done in the MCU when he popped up here and there. And I'm ready for him to become a fool, you know, villain, anti-hero. You know, he walks the line and that's going to be great. I'm also a big fan of Scarlett Johansson's Natasha Romanoff. I've enjoyed her since the very beginning, and I'll always have a special place in my heart for the character. You know, when I went to see Civil, uh, Civil War at the press screening, they let some fans in as well. And during her, uh, Natasha Romanoff's action sequences at the beginning of the movie, she, this fan was like shouting and screaming and literally punching along with Natasha, and I just saw what the character meant to so many fans, and that made a very strong impression on me. Also, the way she went out in Endgame, iconic. 
I'm very excited to see her finally get her own movie. And I'm also excited to see the Black Widow program expanded with new operatives and its own villains. That's going to be great. The trailers have also teased some great action sequences, perhaps on the level of Bucky's legendary action sequences. He has the best ac action sequences, sequences in the MCU so far. I, uh, although Taskmaster, he can duplicate everyone, and I'm very curious to see what they do with that. They haven't quite lived up to the potential of that in the trailers, but let's see the actual movie. I'd also like to add that it would be great to see one of these female-led action films with a female director succeed. It's been a rough year for them. And we're down to our last one with Black Widow. Number four, Shang-Chi may be hitting theaters July 9th. Can any Hollywood movie do the impossible? And that's appeal to both Eastern and Western audiences. Before, I'd have thought Disney overall could do it. Bob Iger's relationship with China is so strong at this point, he wants to be the US ambassador there. But Mulan was a colossal failure. On every level, it was bad. So enter Shang-Chi from the same studio, but a different division. Can Kevin Feige win here too? Kevin Feige's like, I gotta, I'll do it myself. I gotta do everything. And we're, we've already caught a glimpse of epic, epic practical sets being built in Australia. It looked good. And a fighting tournament with Marvel combatants, some of them making their first time introduction to the MCU. Oh my God, that's an amazing idea. You would think an idea that it's impossible to fail. Although who would have thought you could have torpedoed Mulan in that fashion? I enjoyed it, but you can't deny that it was just a failure. You know, I tried to, you know, I separate my own critical opinions from my news commentary opinions, depending on the video I'm making. Now, I'm excited about this whole cast, but especially Aquafina as the female lead. That is amazing. And also for Tony Lung to create a cool modern day version of the iconic yet, let's just say, unfortunately, very unfortunately dated uh, Marvel villain, the Mandarin, who sounds so much like the Mandalorian, they might have ruined that name with that. So we'll see. Number three, Loki, hitting Disney Plus in May. We have a month, but not a day. Oh, I can't wait. After we saw that brilliant first trailer, we knew how special this project truly is. Wow. While Marvel's other Disney Plus shows seem like really good TV shows, Loki looks very much like peak streaming, or perhaps even a movie itself. And the show is not only ambitious with its quality, but it's clearly going to be very important to the future of the MCU. We're bringing in Roxanne in a major way. I think they're doing the, uh, as I said in my recent, recent trailer uh, breakdown for this, I think they're doing the mining of the nine realms for, uh, you know, for resources. That's gonna be so great. I love business stuff, as you know, even in uh, fictional franchises and worlds. The TVA, which is gonna set the groundwork for Kang, the Conqueror, who's showing up in Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantum Mania. And then even referencing real life conspiracy theories. As I also said in my recent trailer breakdown, that's not just MCU world building, but real world building. That's impressive. Number two, WandaVision, debuting on Disney Plus this Friday. Talk about huge risks. WandaVision's first three episodes are actually just full sitcoms. Fighting you crazy guy. Wanda is perhaps the most untapped MCU character, both in terms of power, but also popularity with fans. She's ready to explode, and when she does, she's gonna rip open the multiverse. Oh wow, WandaVision is the start of the next big MCU initiative, the multiverse. She's also gonna show up because of that in Spider-Man 3 and Doctor Strange 2, as I've been reporting to you. And this will bring to life one of the most famous comic book events of all time, although with lots of changes, as Feige likes to do. I have some theories about that, which we'll be talking about soon. But Wanda's descent into madness and the repercussions that follow. Oh boy! Which leads to number one, Spider-Man 3 may be hitting theaters December 17th. I don't think this will ever go to Disney+. Plus. They're going to wait. I mean, it's they, they have the time. It's late enough in 2021 that if it has to maybe be pushed a little bit, it'll be okay. I can't believe that Feige set up his biggest upcoming movie over at Sony. But they do have better profit participation now because of the deal that they reached. And also Disney is heavily invested in Peter Parker in other areas. He's the first brand new ride that will debut at Avengers Campus in Disneyland. They made that cool animatronic that can actually do Spider-Man moves. Plus Disney owns the merchandising rights to Spider-Man now. They got it back from Sony and he sells a lot of merch. I don't know if you saw the news story recently about a little girl with two twins and they sent up these balloons with letters to Santa and they came down hundreds of miles somewhere else and and so the, it was a really great news piece, you know, gave you the feels. But on one of these little girls' lists, she only had two franchises. What were they? Frozen and Spider-Man. Cool kid. 
Uh, so Fi so that's very valuable to Disney right there. Plus Feige will again KO DC, beating them to the punch on reuniting multiple actors from different versions of the same franchise. Nerds, Tobey Maguire is still holding out as of my making this video, but he's close and so many other actors have already signed and been on set and filmed, including Daredevil, who will finally return here. That's fantastic. And as I've told you, he's set to show up in uh, the She-Hulk show as well. Just like Avengers Endgame gave us something we'd never seen before, Feige is actually set to top himself with his multiverse saga. Like, forget seeing all the characters from the same franchise together. How'd you like to see them all from different versions of the franchise and from versions of the franchise that almost happened? It's amazing. This is gonna be huge. This will be the Spider-centric chapter, which will lead up to the Avenger-centric finale with Doctor Strange 2. Fans are gonna go nuts. I can't wait, I can't wait to see ever. It's gonna be such a great ride. Uh, so, you know, it's a great Spider-Man ride at the movies and at Disneyland. So what they've been talking about that recently. I have to just add something here. It's so brilliant. It's even an all ages ride. Anyone can ride it, which just shows the universal appeal of Spider-Man. All right, so uh, share your own rankings for the MCU down below. I can't wait to see them. Uh, subscribe today. And of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.